Hey guys, I'm back at it out here. So in the beginning, you're gonna see me, I had to fabricate a couple little uh, wooden blocks, one inch or so, to go into these, uh, the, the upper and lower forward fuselage channels. Um, and I'll take a picture and show you exactly where these go on the plane. But basically you have to kind of give them a good, give them a good wrench and a twist and show you're gonna see me twi twisting them around pretty much backwards trying to impart the twist that needs to be imparted came out perfectly do not be afraid to twist them uh, it's very important per the plans you have to get a metric crescent wrench uh, to do this thing and thankfully they left the uh, sweaty grunty guy off the plans for us to uh, see exactly how to do the work uh, never never say vans doesn't have a sense of humor um, and then once that is done, once you get those things imparted, you kind of, uh, those twists imparted, you put it on the plane. And then it's just a matter of going through and doing the bend on the two forward skins, those cheek, kind of cheek area bends on those two forward skins. Uh, many of you had said that this is going to suck worse than the previous, and you're right and wrong, and I'll talk to that here now. <sighs> okay. So... Someone had said that one thing I was going to be concerned about was uh, the bending of these forward skins. This is one of those skins. Uh, these go here, and there's this sharp bend right under here. Um, and I can see why they thought that I was going to have a harder time with this. It is definitely a worse process. It's not as fun. But in, the, in a weird way, uh, I don't think I've had such a hard time with it because... I'm not afraid to bend the skin at this point. I think I think with the previous ones, I was a little concerned about bending. Um, now I'm not. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think at this point, um, this is not that bad, actually. Because, well, I mean, worst case scenario, you ruin the skin and you buy a new one. But um, you'd have to really screw it up to ruin it. So... No, I don't think this was overly bad. Uh, I, I think I'm I think I've got a good bend. In fact, this might be I'll have to look. This might be slightly overbent, but that's fine. Um, and then I went through and I put my little crease uh, in the the edge using you know this guy, which gives that ever so slight crease, which kind of cups it up against the bottom. So that's this one. It is done. So now I'm going to do everything on the other one. Um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to show was my Laundrons on both sides, something that I did incorrect was to overbend right here ever so slightly. Um, you can see right here that this bend is clearly the wrong direction. Uh, and, and whoops, uh, this is one of those situations where I followed the plans I thought, but I, I guess I had it backwards and, and both of them are the they're canted outward instead of slightly canted inward. So that's one of the things I'm gonna have to take into account. When I pull everything off, I'm gonna have to just move those the other direction ever so slightly, no big deal. Um, but other than that, I think everything at this end of the plane is coming together nicely. Uh, I'm now going to temporarily test fit this piece on here just to see what it looks like and then do the other side. And right here, you can see I'm doing the test fit. The test fit actually came out perfectly. I give a thumbs up. Uh, and so now that I've got my test fit working, it's time to pull the other skin out and start working on it. All right, we just did the other one. We got it rolled. Now I got to do this one, which means I've got to put all the markings on here uh, just so I know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so um, someone had asked me in one of the last videos, I think the last video actually, uh, if I would recommend getting one of these carts. You know, what I liked about it, what I did, I just just totally drew on my ruler, stupid. Uh, it, what I recommend, what I don't recommend, etc. cetera. Um, and whether or not I think they are a good purchase. Three eighths. One and three eighths, that's gonna be right there. Um, well, so that cart was actually a gift to me from my awesome next door neighbors, you know, giving, giving to the cause, I suppose. Uh, so I didn't pay for it, so the price was right. Um, you know, you, you can't beat free. That's, 
That's pretty amazing. But would I recommend it? Yeah, actually, it's uh, it's really handy. It, it, you know, it's kind of the law of horizontal spaces for me, though, um, and that I will always find a way to just stack crap on it. Uh, not real useful when I do that, but <coughs> you know, that's just who I am. But it's a, a very useful tool for certain, and I can highly recommend getting one because. They, uh, you know, when it comes to rolling stuff around the shop, okay, I've got my measurements. Where's my straight edge? Oh, when it comes to rolling stuff around the shop, I mean, that's really dang handy. So yeah, I would say if you can afford one, uh, get one. They're 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 great. Turn this this way. I, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. Um, like I said, it's it's hard to talk bad about something that was free. I'll always find a use for something. I'm one of those guys. I'll repurpose something till I make it useful. So right now I am drawing all the lines and my little Sharpie is getting a little dull. Um, drawing all the lines on here that I'm going to be doing for the, the, the curve lines. These are the curve lines, the start and end roll lines. And they talk about that in the plans uh, in great detail. Like I said just a second ago, though, this actually isn't that bad. I, I, like I said, I think it's just because I, I'm not fearful of screwing up. Uh, I'm going to do the deed and get the best roll you know, I can out of it. And even if it's not 100% perfect, which my previous rolls were not, um, it was good enough that I can move forward. And I've said this before, uh, I think perfection is the enemy of progress and the, the enemy of good enough. And good enough is all you really need to go for. Because a lot of the stuff that, you know, the little niggling imperfections that you know about, no one else is ever going to see. So don't beat yourself up about it. Uh, unless you specifically go looking for it or because I pointed out, oh, look, there's this problem, you know, things like that. Uh, a little extra goop on here, for example. Um, if, if people don't know about it, they're not going to go find it. So, so there's that. Now let me get all the other stuff in place. I'm going to clamp this thing down and then we're going to go to town, um, bending this side. Oh, one thing I did want to talk about five years. Yeah. Been at this for five years already. So, you know, my goal was, as many of you know, was to have the plane completely finished by like two days ago, the Valentine's Day 2020. That was my goal. And I did not make my goal. So that was my goal. It was a pretty lofty goal, let's be clear. Um, and I didn't make it. And oh well. Wait, wait, wait. What happened to the audio? Um, so I use a little Tascam audio, digital audio recorder with a lavalier mic uh, for sound quality. It's been a really great thing. Some of you guys asked me, that's how I do it. Uh, but unfortunately, I pulled this out of my pocket to hit stop and it just slipped out of my hand and hit the ground. Batteries went everywhere. And unfortunately, that corrupted the file. So uh, this next bit of video, uh, you're going to have a hard time understanding me. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I've decided to go ahead and leave it in because some of you, I was answering some questions some of you had. So anyways, back to it. Um, this is one of those very long-term projects. Uh, it's, it's, it's my personal elephant and I'm still working on it. Still very much enjoy it. Uh, I've been pondering flying more, though, since I have not gotten in a small general aviation aircraft in uh, over a year at this point, just because I've been you know, busy with life. I've been thinking about getting back in the air. I've actually been thinking about buying a small airplane that I could fly around for a little bit to get hours and just have fun, um, and then get back to this full time, you know, but there are people, I know there are, are several of you out there that have reached out to me and said, you know, you started building because I got you into it. 
and now you're ahead of me. <laughs> well, oops. <laughs> um, well, that's inconvenient. I need to hmm, do that. So yeah, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know what to say. Uh, that's uh, on the one hand, it's like, oh, that sucks. But on the other hand, it's it's like, well, good. You know, good for you. Good for you for being ahead of me. That's really nothing wrong with that. Um, Anyway, so yeah, a lot, some people are ahead of me, and they're that's great. Hey, you know, start a start a YouTube channel, and I'll start watching your videos. Uh, this stuff is just you know, it's a fun, a fun project, and, and kind of life changing in some ways. Um, ooh, wow, I bent these. That's how you know you're putting a good curve in because you're bending your bending your tools. What's what's frustrating about, you know, the, the folks who come forward and say, oh, I'm ahead of you now, has nothing to do with them, right? Some people are like, you know, I started a year ago, I'm already well ahead of you, and I'm going to, oh. bleed from my airplane. Um, I'm already well ahead of you, and, you know, I'm, I'll miss watching your videos. Thank you. Um, What's frustrating about that for me is I, I, I want to stay ahead of you because I want to get this thing done because I want to fly it. But I don't have the kind of time some people have. Some of the guys, uh, I'm so sorry, I was talking to one of you recently and I forget your name, but he's putting like 12 hours a day in. Wow, <laughs> you know that's awesome. He's going to have that thing done in a year and a half. Um, and I just don't have that kind of time. You know, I work full time. Um, I work full-time 12-hour days and then uh, multiple days in a row, and then I have a, a day off, usually two days off, uh, somewhere in the week somewhere, and I come out here and I try to put some time in. And, and so for me, it's like, dang, you know, I wish I had that kind of time. I just don't. Um, and, and we talked about this previously is that a lot of these, you know, this build, you're, you're trading your time for money, and I, and I don't have the, you know, what's a... What was the, uh, the, the I, I saw the di a video on the Diamond uh, DA62, their newest offering, and what a hot plane, it looks so cool. I don't have the cash for one of them. You know, it's a million dollar aircraft, I am sure. Um, if you have the kind of money for that, that's fantastic, good on you. Uh, I don't begrudge you that. I think, oh, shit. I, just, uh, I think it's awesome. I would love to have something like that in the, in the stable, but I don't. Uh, diamond, if you want to donate one, I'll take one. Um, I'll be your best salesman. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those situations where I'm trading time for money, and so I'm building this, and it just means that time is one of those things that you, you know you put the time in that you're able to put in. In my case, it's you know a couple hours a week. It's about all I can do. A couple of you asked me more about my patrol car. It's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. It's it's a car. You know, um, that whole situation was just absurd. And then apparently we're supposed to have another storm this coming week. And it's going to be a very similar situation of just gross, snowy, rain. Uh, now I know not to park it where I parked it. Pretty sure if I if I let that happen again, I will not hear the end of it. So that's coming. And they're moving my schedule, which I'm looking forward to actually. So uh, as it is now, I work days. Uh, I work 12-hour days. My day starts at about four in the morning. Even though my shift doesn't start until six, we're there at, at least we're there 5:30. And then uh, I personally wake up 4, 4.15 to get out the door. You know, get ready to get out the door. So my day starts pretty early, and it doesn't end until 6 p.m. Um, and being the kind of work it is, you quite often go well beyond when you're supposed to be getting off. It's just the nature of the beast. And so, yeah. <clears throat> They're changing my schedule. It's going to be, I'm going to a split shift, so I'm going to be working noon to midnight. 
and they're talking about rotating it based on time of year. So like, I mean, out here at midnight in the middle of the winter, there's nothing going on. I mean, the roads are rolling up. So they're talking about like during parts of the year, it'd be like 10 to 10 and then 11 to 11 and then 12 to 12 and back to 11 to 11, you know, that sort of thing. But for now, it's just going to be 12 to 12 because it's the first time they've done this. So I'm actually really looking forward to it. Um, oh, and somebody else had mentioned that only the rookies get the really old cars. Uh, I've been in law enforcement since 2001. Uh, I actually had my very first interview in law enforcement the day, at literally 9-12, the day after 9-11 is when I had my law enforcement. And, and my deciding to go into law enforcement actually had nothing to do with um, uh, the, the attacks on 9-11. <laughs> but, so I've been doing this a while. Uh, and all of our cars, you know, in this tiny little county that we're in, all of our cars are kind of old. I chose my car because I think it's the best looking car. Uh, all the other cars are black and whites, uh, either all white or all black with opposite lettering. This is the only car in the fleet that's gray. Uh, and I really, I think it looks pretty sharp. Uh, so that's why I, I chose that car knowing full well it was kind of an old beater. It's got 190,000 miles on it and it's on its third engine. Uh, it's got an LS3 Corvette engine in it. Sounds great. Uh, can't steer for crap. <laughs> uh, it's got, it's got a lot of understeer. Uh, it just, I, I, it needs work. It's, it's pretty ratted out. Um, but it's still a good car. I still use it. I still love it. Uh, though it did try to commit suicide. Hmm. <laughs> My rolling off the mountain, but, uh, yeah, not all the rookies get the old cars. In fact, our newest guy has one of the newer cars. So that's not always true. Um, but I am due for a new car and I hope to get one. Honestly, I kind of want an Explorer. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is up here in the mountains, I'm going to start doing this now. Up here in the mountains, having a car that you can, um, that you can, you know, have all wheel drive is really handy. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm using my belt being a big fat guy. I have a belt on. Uh, and I'm holding, kind of lifting with my belt and my legs, and I'm pushing down so that it kind of forces that curve. I'm pushing that way as well and trying to get the roll, trying to get it past that um, elasticity point that you guys had talked about so it begins that curve. And it even says this in the plans, don't try to do this all in one go. So I'm just sitting here, I'm just giving it little, Little bends, little bends and pushes. Um, I don't know how I cut myself. Um, this aluminum is sharp. You know, I, I, I need to get a better, my deburring, I have a the same wheel that I use on my uh, bench grinder over there for deburring. I had several of those for the drill, so I can just go up and down, but they're getting pretty ratty. So I, not a, I need to get a couple new one of those. Uh, I just don't have them yet. So, so that's it. It's just whole body, you know, pushings, and then you let it go and you can kind of see, okay, we're not there yet, keep trying. So that's it, that's all we're doing. And uh, don't be afraid to bend. You know, it even says in the plan something like, you know, grunting human left out for visual purposes or whatever. But, so yeah. The other thing is I found if you take all this off and you just kind of roll it with your hands, that's not too bad. Well, that might be how I, uh, it's kind of a weird spot. I don't know how I cut myself, I have no idea. But doing a little bit of hand work, that's helpful too. All right, so now we're gonna put this piece of paper back in here and move on to the next thing, which is on the back. Actually, let's, I always go through and I mark off that I did steps. So now the back. Ooh, bunch of stuff. All right, let's see. Clico, uh, read, uh, I don't know. Clico the clip to the bulkhead side channel is shown the lower blow up figure. Boom, mark location for each bulkhead. Getting sweaty, even though it was kind of cold in here. This manhandling and grunting makes you sweaty. That fogs up your glasses. 
All right. Remove the clip bulkhead side channel using a mark behind the bending line. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, okay. More bending of things. It's endless. <laughs> Come on, Vans. You could have done some of this for us. All right, let's go find some parts and see about doing some bends. <clears throat> okay, so step 29-12 uh, deals with these two little pieces right here and these little guys here. And I was trying to find them. I was like, man, I don't, I don't have those parts. And I did have them. It's something that I obviously used really early in the plans for the fuselage. And I broke them out and I just sit them here on my table so that I always had them. And I was like, what in the heck? Where are these parts? I had, you know, basically forgotten about them. Um, and now that I have them, or finally found them, I was like, good Lord, they've been sitting here for a year or months, several months at least. So there goes that organization thing. I was trying to find exactly when it was I got these. Because these are, this obviously was, you know, one, these were probably... I'm gonna guess stuck together like that with you know these on the back. You know, it was one piece that you broke apart into multiple pieces and used something off that, whereas these just sat here waiting to be used. So now it's time to use them. And it took a long time to get to that. So just uh, be sure to mark them well and put them someplace where you'll remember. Mine were sitting on my table. Uh, so I ultimately found them. But now I have to go over there temporarily install these and draw some lines on them so I'll know exactly how much bend to impart in my vise. So I'm gonna go do that right now. Okay, skip through that. Um, basically these little parts now, I had to put them on the plane, uh, in, in, you know, on the uh, lower part of the forward fuselage where they go, draw a line, take them off and give it just an a 4%, just a tiniest little bit of a bend on either one of them, which makes sense. Uh, once I put them on there, I'll show you why that makes sense. But so these are both bent correctly. Um, haven't gotten to these little guys yet. Instead, next step is to take these, pull them apart, clean them up, deburr them, cut them apart, um, and go from there. So these are the gussets. So right now we're getting this, we're finally down to the brass tacks of getting all the little nitty gritty pieces that go together to build this sucker and assemble everything. And every one of these little pieces adds a strength. So you want to make sure you treat them correctly. So that's what I'm going to do now is pull, cut these guys apart, deburr them and label them to make sure I know which one's which. And then go figure out where they actually sit on the plane. So that's going to be interesting. By the way, something I've been meaning to ask you guys, if there's something that you want to see while I'm working on this stuff, don't hesitate to ask. Put down in the comments below something like, hey, could you show me X, Y, Z thing? I have no problem with answering those kind of questions. Uh, just, you know, I don't, I don't always know what you guys want to see. So feel free to tell me. Anyways, all right, back to it. And now right here, what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm adding all the bits and bobs to the front of the plane, uh, skins, those channels that I had showed with the bends and everything and starting to put Clecos in. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start doing all the match drilling of all the holes, just like I did on the aft part of the forward fuselage. Uh, same process. So. Uh, that's that. Uh, by the way, if you guys like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor, jump down there and poke that like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to get any more notifications. And if you really like what I'm doing, you can jump over to my Patreon page and for as little as a dollar a month. You guys can help support me and I can keep producing things. Uh, just think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. I love coffee. You guys are awesome. Anyways, back to it. And that's it, guys. That's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you so very much. Remember, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.